Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the praise um, and also thank you for the prayer. It's such a blessing to be in the house of God. Amen. And I pray that everyone who is here today, whether we have gone through a really rough start at the beginning of the week or whether we had a good start, let's give thanks to God that we are here back in the house of God to receive even more blessings. Amen. Today, we're going to uh, touch on uh, the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. And it comes from the book uh, in the series, uh, God's Administration of the History of Redemption, book series by Reverend Dr. Abraham Park, our late founding senior pastor of uh, Pemkan Jiro Church, our main church. Uh, this is in book seven, the title. We haven't got a book yet in English, so but we should start memorizing the title in anticipation for the book to reach us very soon. The Eternal Covenant for All Generations, the Ten Commandments. I hope this is the right translation in English. <laughs> okay, so the Ten Commandments, why are we studying the Ten Commandments? Now, um, I don't know about you, but for me personally, I used to think that Ten Commandments is just one portion of the Bible. And to the extent that I don't really like that part. So I prefer the Jesus part. So maybe, you know, don't need to spend too much time on that. Anyway, Jesus came and over, overcame everything and won the victory. But as we study um, more, we will realize that the Ten Commandments is the essence of the Christian gospel. It's like the core, right? So if without the Ten Commandments, it's like almost like no essence. Okay. It is a summation of the total scripture. Okay. And without these Ten Commandments, Without studying, understanding, we cannot fully understand Jesus, how he came, how he came to fulfill the work that ultimately leads us to the gift of eternal life and grants us the entrance into God's eternal kingdom. It is like a heart that pumps and circulates blood throughout the entire body, supplying life through the body. So is the Ten Commandments, the source of all the words of God. What we see in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, these are the expanded writings of the heart of God with the stream of life surging from the Ten Commandments. So it is impossible to say we are Christians if we despise the Ten Commandments. We are almost like non-believers. So today, let us change our attitude, or at least let me change my attitude, and truly seek to understand the Ten Commandments. Contrary to many people's thinking, because Ten Commandments is so difficult, right? We can't, we can't actually obey every single thing. So therefore, if I break one, I break all. So it's like almost depressing and almost thinking that it leads to death. But contrary to that thinking, the Ten Commandments gives us life. There is life in it. So we're going to look at the Fourth Commandment today. And uh, we just will simply look at what is the commandment about, why we need to keep it, how to keep it, and we'll conclude uh, with blessings. So let's read the scripture for fourth commandment. Um, it is the longest commandment in the Ten Commandments, and I'm very thankful to God for giving me this very long commandment. Uh, yes, okay, because there's a lot to look into it. And today, um, I can't even cover too many things because it's such a profound a very rewarding word as we study. Exodus 20, chapter, uh, verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen. In this verse, in this passage, God tells us the commandment. What is the commandment? Remember the Sabbath day to make it holy, to keep it holy. And then he tells us how you can keep it in verse 9 and 10, which we'll go through later on. And 
it tells us why. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth. We'll draw a bit into the why are we keeping this Sabbath day. Verse 11 again from the same uh, chapter. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that's in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Now, the Lord rested on the seventh day. And he made this a Sabbath day. He blessed it and he said, keep it holy. Okay, and he made it holy. Which Sabbath day is God ultimately thinking about? God is ultimately thinking about what he described in the first part of this verse, the six days of creation, the completion of his creation. The Sabbath that God is talking about is when God completed his work of creation. So let's go back okay, to a little bit to the part, fun part of the Bible because while we think about the work of creation, God's work of creation is the first thing we see in the Bible. Okay? Um, but actually, that is also the ending that God wants because in Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, he says, remember the former things of old for I am God and there is no other I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purpose. So God tells the end from the beginning. This work of creation, this completion work, the Sabbath that he's referring to is also the ending that he wants to achieve for us in the end. So let's go back to... Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, and let's read this verse. I'll read for you. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. God, so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Now, God rested. Did God rest because he has completed all his work and was feeling tired? Apparently not, because God doesn't need to sleep. He doesn't doze off. God is not tired. God is, in fact, very anxious and still very much working towards our salvation. But here it says God rested. In the Hebrew word, it's Shabbat. Shabbat means to cease, to put an end to the completion of all work. In this case, in Exodus 20, we see that it is completion of God's creation work that he was doing. God's purpose of creation is fulfilled through the completion of his creation. When God created men, he gave, I mean, he first created in the first, uh, in, the, in the six days of creation, God first created everything else. And at the most, it's like at the peak of it all, at the end, the last, the, it's like the climax, he created Adam. And so that everything that God prepared is given to Adam. So when God created the man and gave him everything, and this man had dominion and rule over all these things that God created, God was really pleased. Okay? Because this is God's purpose for him. He wants him to be a ruler over all creation. Therefore, God is satisfied and he could rest. Okay, so when God rested, it means he was in the state of being very satisfied, very delighted. It's like I just started a very tough project, so many challenges, so many things to prepare, but finally, I was able to complete it. I am in a state of being very satisfied, very joyful. I can finally celebrate. So this work, when it's finished, God was really delighted. And the word um, Sabbath uh, in Hebrew, Shabbat came from Shabbat. So um, don't, we don't have to really uh, think too hard about it, but Shabbat is simply the day that God uh, designated for us to commemorate and to remember that God rested when the creation work is completed. Now, creation work completed with the creation of men, as I mentioned earlier. So we can read this in Genesis 1.31. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth 
day. And Genesis 2.2 tells us on the seventh day, God finished his work and he rested from all that he had done. So God created for six days and final touch was the creation of men. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we know how precious this man and how honorable this man was made. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Amen. So let us, as we think about God's creation work, we also, of course, we are reminded of the Garden of Eden. So let us think about the Garden of Eden and through this, let us try to understand Sabbath a little more. The Garden of Eden. Okay, Eden, uh, if you check the uh, uh, dictionary, is translated as a state of utter uh, perfection and happiness. And uh, in Hebrew original meaning, it's a place of pleasure. So Garden of Eden, we can, we can think about it as the state of uh, rest because God was there, the place of Sabbath. And the place existed after the creation of man. Right? Genesis 2.8 tells us, the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And Genesis 2.15 tells us as well that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So in the garden of Eden, there is God and the man. So some version like NASB tells us, uh, another word for work is cultivate uh, in the uh, original Hebrew text is abad. Uh, I'm sure we are familiar with this word after having been taught many times. I'll pause a moment for you to recall the meaning of abad. <laughs> abad in Genesis 2.15, okay, it has the meaning of to work or to serve, to worship. In Exodus 7.16, um, this was uh, when God wants his people to be uh, to leave Egypt. He told Moses to tell uh, Pharaoh, okay, the Lord, the God of Hebrews, sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve, abad, me in the wilderness. Now, work or to serve? To work or to serve, to worship. When we work for someone that we love, there is joy. There should be joy, right? If we work with someone that we love. Okay, and, and it's not just one way because when we are in true love relationship with one another, with our spouse or uh, uh, even our family members, it's a two-way fellowship, right? There is much um, strength whenever we come into this fellowship with our loved ones. We gain that strength and we want to work for them, right? We're working, we're working, we are earning money for our family because we love them. So in the Garden of Eden is a, is a state of rest, a place of Sabbath, because in the Garden of Eden, God and men were together, and men were serving and worshiping God. What kind of men? Genesis 2, 7 tells us, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature, or in some version, a living being. So this man that is in the Garden of Eden is a living creature or a living being. The man that has that image of God, as we read earlier in Genesis 1.26. So when God is in fellowship with this man who is a living creature, God was at rest. God was able to rest. He was joyful and satisfied. And man, in the image of God, we also benefit. We were also, it's, he was full of wisdom, Adam. Genesis 1.20 tells us that the man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the sky, to every animal of the field. And in Ezekiel 28.12, it describes that while you were in Eden, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. This is the blessing that God gives when we are in Sabbath with him. 100% beneficial for us. So again, what kind of men? 
back to Genesis 2-7, the core ingredient is the breath of life. This breath of life, okay, we also see in, in the New Testament, Jesus breathed onto his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. God is spirit. When he breathes onto us, it's the spirit of God. And John 6, 63 tells us the spirit, the words of God, the words of Jesus is spirit and life. So the core ingredient that makes this man able to serve and worship God and in harmony, in fellowship, in total love relationship with God in the Garden of Eden is that breath of life. The man who has the word of God. True rest is when God's spirit, God's word is in us and never departs from us. But however, okay, the effect was too fast. Rest was broken when Adam fell and disobeyed the word of God. So no more Garden of Eden. What happened? Genesis 2, 16 and 17, we all know these verses. God commanded him, saying that you shall not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam didn't listen, okay? The warning is that you shall not eat, for if you eat of it, you shall die. In Genesis 3, 6, we saw that he ate it. And in Genesis 3, Verse 23, therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. So Sabbath was broken. When Adam fell, God can no longer be in his rest. It's like if someone that we love so much is in trouble, our heart cannot be at rest. We want to work and make things right for that person, right? then how can we restore that rest or that Sabbath? Don't worry, because God says in John 5, 16, that he's working until now. I'll read for you. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. Verse 17, but he answered, then my father is working until now, and myself, and I myself am working. The restoration of Sabbath cannot be achieved by our own human effort, but God is working. God is working. That's why He sent Jesus, who came to this earth. He took all of our sins and He died on the cross, but He resurrected. That is most important. And if we truly believe in Jesus, then we can, we, can be rest, we can restore that Sabbath. So God is teaching us how to restore that Sabbath through today's fourth commandment. But first of all, let's realize something, that Sabbath belongs to God. Sab Sabbath exists solely for God. If we read the verse, um, Exodus 20, 10 in NASB, it tells us the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord. That means it's God's possession. Okay, if something belongs to me, I will make sure I take care of it, right? So God will take care of it. Sabbath of the Lord. This is a day of the Lord's rest, completion, delight, and satisfaction. Please do not ever think again that Sunday, today our Sabbath day is Sunday, right? Um, please do not ever think that Sundays are weekends for rest, our rest day. Let's change our mindset. Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord. It's a day of the Lord's rest. It's a day that we want to make God's heart at rest, fully satisfied, joyful, and delighted. Now today, um, we, we celebrate the Lord's day, which is on a Sunday, but in the um, Old Testament time, they celebrated Sabbath on a Saturday. So Sabbath is when God's beautiful work is finished. So when Adam sinned, God is no longer at rest, as we saw in the earlier slide. Sabbath is broken. But Jesus came, took all our burdens for our sins. He died on the cross for our behalf, paid the price for our sin by his blood to deliver us from sin. So, so as long as there is sin, God cannot rest. But Jesus overcame 
all this sin. And on the third day, on Sunday, he rose again from the dead, shattering the power of sin and darkness and death to give us, the fallen man, this great gift called eternal life. So this is the day that is a true day of rest, a gift that's given to us. So that's why we also have the Lord's Day in place of Sabbath day today. And when we think about Sabbath today, of course, we will relate it as to as the Lord's Day. But technically, every day can be a Sabbath as long as we are in fellowship with God, holding on to His Word and covenant. So how to keep the Sabbath day holy? Um, first, we have to remember. Uh, we have to set it apart for the Lord, for His purpose. And we have to come into this Sabbath observance to enjoy His blessings because God has blessed this day and He has made it holy. Now, firstly, to remember. Okay, verse 8 tells us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember in Hebrew is zakar. And we know this, we have come across this in uh, previous studies that we must uh, understand what is remember, what it means to remember. So it is written in an imperative form, which means um, you have to, you must remember. You have to keep it in your mind constantly. You have to let it penetrate deep inside your heart. You have to remember within your heart, Sabbath day. Holy is Kadesh. Uh, it means distinguish or set apart. And this description, to keep it holy, um, literally means in order to set apart that day for that special purpose, okay, you have to remember. So remembering, when do we remember? When do you remember your husband's or your wife's birthday? Is it on that day itself? Then that's not remembering, right? <laughs> the verse, uh, the passage, verse 9 tells us during the six days, we have to remember. We have to have the awareness and the sense of direction of where we are going towards that week, to the rest day of God. Throughout the six days, we have to remember. The six days are connected to the seven days. We can read that in verse 9, as I mentioned. Six days you shall labor. Do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Now, labor, this is uh, in the imperfect tense of the word abad in Hebrew, is actually uh, abod. It means offering worship to God. So, in the six days, we need to start to prepare. If, I mean, you can imagine just like Sabbath, if Sabbath was a wedding day your wedding day, right? You will remember way in advance. You will work towards it. You will prepare it. And you don't just remember the wedding date, right? You remember the one person that you're going to marry. So remembering Sabbath is remembering God himself. So what is the work in the six days that we need to be engaged in in the six days? God tells us in verse 11 what he did in the six days before he rested. He focused on the creation work for six days. So we are to focus on the same mission of God. So what is the mission of God? To give all creation to man's rule. To have us restore the image of God, to have dominion over all, and to have the eternal Sabbath that he originally gave to men. So this is God's purpose for us. In John 6, 26 to 29, let's read this verse. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So in the six days, when we are working, let us not work just to fill our stomach, just for our own desire, 
but we must do the work of believing in him. Of course, every day we must work. We, we have our families to take care of, but when we are in all the different situations, let's pray, God, even in different situations like this, whether in good times or bad times, help me to draw closer and help me to believe in you more and more. So how shall we labor in the six days? We have to cooperate with God. We have to, you know, be a good partner with God. We have to abide, serve and worship. Then we can restore that state of rest for God. Now this world is ruled by Satan, right? And he will do anything to make us forget about this mission, about God, about God's purpose for us. Because Satan doesn't want you to win back that rule. He's ruling over everything. So we have to cooperate with God and choose to worship and choose to give thanks for everything that comes along our way. So sometimes, right, in this church, right, in our church, um, we have our own work, but we also have a lot of duties and responsibilities for the church. And you just cannot, um, you can't help, but throughout the week, you have to work some things for the church. Right? I think most of us are like this. And I think at times like this, sometimes we feel so weighed down, burdened. But let us give thanks because these are the tasks that remind us to look towards the Sabbath. Because most of the time, we have to hand a report card by Sabbath, right? You have to get the lunch ready by Sabbath. So, by, by Lord's Day. So let's give thanks. And, and whenever we feel that, oh, God is getting too much, let us change also our mindset and say, God, help us to keep your mission in mind. The mission is, your mission is that I will be completed. I will be a complete creation, uh, a complete uh, living being created at the end of it all. And everyone else will be complete. So let us have this mission in mind that whatever we do, we want to build each other up. We want to build the church up. So with this kind of mindset, let's, Adjust every time we feel some, like we are burdened. Let's adjust our attitude and our heart, and ask God help us to focus on Your mission. First Corinthians thirty one, uh, ten thirty one says, "So whatever you, so whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God." Amen. So even when you are too busy, you can't really eat a proper meal. You're eating a bread or something that you don't like. We do it all for the glory of God. Okay. There will be a time that you can celebrate. God, God doesn't make us go beyond, right? What we cannot take. So, so how to keep the Sabbath day holy? Our purpose must be God's rest, okay? If we are mature, if we want to be mature children of our God, Father God, we must think about our God's heart, our God first. Our purpose is God's rest. God can rest when we have deep fellowship with Him, when we can hear His voice, when we dwell in the spiritual Eden with Him. So daily, we must have this kind of heart. When we remember the Sabbath, we must remember the Lord. And by remembering beforehand, we can keep it, we can keep um, Sabbath um, holy by setting it apart for His purpose. God's rest is the promised land. When we receive the inheritance of the promised land, that is God's rest. When we receive the gift of the kingdom of heaven, that is God's rest. When we are fully restored in fellowship with him. So in conclusion, the blessings of the Sabbath. As we read in the main passage today, God blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So in this Sabbath day or Lord's day that we come to, God has put all his blessings in that day. And to miss out on that, would be foolish for us. God has put everything, all the blessings, full pack in that day. If we come into that Sabbath, we will receive those blessings. Amen. Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14, tells us, I'll read for you, if you turn, if you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways or seeking your own pleasure or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord. 
and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. God says in verse 14, you will take delight in the Lord. It's like you will fall in love with God. And so, we always sing songs like, oh, I love you, Lord. You know, but in our heart, we know we don't really love the Lord. But God says if you keep the Sabbath, you don't go in your own way, okay? You, you, you don't talk your own words, okay? You will take delight in the Lord. It's a promise, right? The mouth of the Lord has spoken. You will fall in love with God. When we fall in love with God, nothing else matters. We will ride on the heights of the earth, ride upon the high places of the earth. That means we will triumph over our enemies and God will help us to conquer and overcome. Deuteronomy 33, 29 says, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, the sword of your triumph. Your enemies shall come fawning to you, and you shall tread upon their backs. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we read very um, deep verses like this, Isaiah or Deuteronomy, and say, oh, it's so hard to believe in this kind of blessing. I'm going down, God. I'm going down right now at my, in my life. And you say, I will write on the heights. It's like, doesn't seem to match. And, sorry, let me, okay, this is the verse, correct. Okay. And, what, and one more thing, God says, you will receive the heritage of Jacob, your father. Heritage, the inheritance of Jacob our forefather. But God, I know Jacob in the Bible. He was really wealthy. He was really rich. I am not. I'm going down and I'm not rich. In Genesis 32, verse 14 and 15, if you have time, you can go through it. We saw how much gifts Jacob gave to his brother Esau to appease him. He was really rich, very wealthy. But not all of us are wealthy physically, right? But we have spiritual wealth. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us that God himself cares for you. Okay, that means he'll take out everything. The inheritance of Jacob, when we think about Jacob, before he got the inheritance, what kind of life he had been through? Maybe now for us, is that kind of training that we are going through. But of course, our forefather Jacob is uh, really awesome. He has gone through so much that it's not easy. Okay, he has... He had to be separated from his own family. He, he had to be on the run. He was uh, cheated by his uncle Laban. He had to work for him for 20 long years, okay? Finally, to marry the woman that he, he, loved, uh, he loved, he had to work and wait for 14 years, right? So it wasn't easy, and he had to face the threat of his own brother wanting to kill him. So much, so much he had to do. Okay, overnight he had to plan how to appease his brother. He had to spend all that time, you know, like planning a proposal in our work. So much, so much um, energy that he had to put in, so much suffering and hardship. But at the end, he got the blessings. He received a great and enormous blessings from God. Firstly, what was the heritage of Jacob? When we received this heritage from our forefather, this is an enormous blessing. Firstly, he, was, he had descendants like the dust of the earth, okay, spreading out to all four corners. So if our forefathers has covered all four corners, means wherever we go, because we are his descendant, we will prosper. Amen? And he became the blessing of becoming the origin of blessing. Okay, and likewise, we will become the origin of blessing to other people around us. People will be blessed through me. And most importantly, he received the land of Canaan. And today for us, the land of Canaan, the promised land, is the internal kingdom of heaven. Now, all these blessings, we can believe. God says you can believe in these blessings if in the six days you work on believing. 
more and more day by day, these blessings will become yours. And in the same passage in Isaiah 58, if we read the earlier verse 13, it also says, it also tells us how we can keep the Lord's day on Sabbath. We do not seek our own pleasure on this day. We do not uh, speak our own words, but we take Sabbath as a delight. The blessings of the Sabbath. When you pray for your family, because we are all concerned about our family, right? People that we love your prayers will be answered. Because Exodus 20.10 tells us the scope includes not just us, ourselves, but our son, our daughter, male servant, female servant, your entire household, everything that you own and that's living within your gates. God cares about them. You'll become a new creature 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now, every Lord's Day, we come into the glory of our Father's rest. This is like a shadow, a copy of the real heavenly rest. So that after Lord's Day, Monday to Saturday, we go back to our own workplaces, our families. God says, when you go back to these places, still do the work of remembering me. Okay? And God will surely help us to overcome all our problems, sin and death eventually. Eternal blessings, the blessings that he has given to us, is both on earth and in heaven, okay? When Israelites received the manna, okay, on the sixth day, on the sixth day, when they, when they collected the two portions, that was a special, uh, the second portion goes into the Sabbath day and it doesn't spoil, that is special. That becomes eternal. But what else, the daily, other than that day, the other days when they collected the one portion of the manna, it, it cannot keep it till the next day, right? It rots. But on the sixth day, when they collected the double portion, the second portion that goes into Sabbath becomes okay. It's good. So the blessings that we receive here, we may not do so well every, every time, every Lord's Day, but God is accumulating that blessings in heaven for us and it becomes eternal. It doesn't spoil. So Hebrews 4, 11, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fail, may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Let's focus on restoring God's rest and restoring the image and dominion which God has originally given to us. When we live with this kind of mission, then we have no, we have no fear of what, what the world may bring us. And if we are truly concerned also about the people around us whom we love, we must first set our hearts right to restore God's rest. Then God will also take care of the rest. Now, how do we get there? So there's a saying, an English proverb that says, um, practice makes perfect. And then someone else comes and says, no, nah, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice only makes progress. Okay, whatever. Practice makes progress, but God will make it perfect. Amen? So every Lord's Day, as we come, Okay, from now till that day. Every Lord say, let's try to live more and more as God's people. And every time we come, it has to be stronger and stronger. As in, we are, our, our relationship, our fellowship with God has to be stronger and stronger. Until that, that day when it comes, when Christ returns, we will be distinguished and separated. God, Father, we will automatically bring us into his, onto his side, right? So every week, let's uh, look to that Lord's day, thinking about God's mission. God's intention is to make us the man who has the word, the spirit of God, who has dominion and rule over all. And in that way, when all things are completed, we can all enter into the Sabbath rest. Amen? Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your commandments that is given to us today. And thank you, Father, for helping us to understand, Father, what it means to keep the Sabbath. Father, help us to remember that it is your day. And 
We ask that in our daily life, Father, help us to really look to honor you and to bring worship to you in whatever situation we are, wherever we are. Help us, Father, to choose to bring worship to you. And Father, may each Sabbath and Lord's Day, as we participate in these days, help us, Father, to be people who will draw closer to you, help build us, this, build us up, our confidence and our trust and our faith in you more and more. We want to really restore your rest and we want to become people whom you are delighted in. We thank you so much. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God. Thank you. Thank you.